Hello and welcome to the Great Debaters Contest as we pitch camp in Machakos region, the home of the People's Park. I am your host, Chris Buru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga, and the search continues for the great debaters in Kenya. The bone of contention is centered around population. And the motion is African countries should embrace a one child policy in order to contain population growth. Proposing this motion, we have Sengani Girls High School. And opposing the motion is Machakos School. Who will have a better say? Let's wait and see. Proposal number one, you have three minutes. African countries should embrace a one-child policy to contain population growth. To embrace this, is to accept an idea or a proposal, especially in a positive attitude. And to contain, this is to prevent something bad from happening, especially when it brings a negative attitude to the particular institution that is concerned and one-child policy. This is a family planning method, which is a way of a population growth. And the population growth itself, this is a gradual increase of people at a particular place. So on to my first point, reduction of the number of street children. Let's take this for instance. One family gets one child. So this means that the parents will be able to take care of the baby and take and give her everything, give him or her everything that he or she needs so that the baby cannot run away and involve in him or herself in the streets. And it's so obvious that a baby cannot run away from home and go and become a news anchor or something of the sort. He goes and becomes a prostitute, a robber, and a thief. So when we involve the African, the one-child policy, this will mean that the child will be taken care of and he or she will not run away from home. On to my second point, it creates employment. In Kenya, we are over 50 million people and the, the population is so high that, no, no, that there are so many people who are unemployed. But if the one-child policy is obtained and is practiced, this means that the child, the people in a particular country will be populated, will be employed because people always have population. And I want, you to, I want to leave with this question. So for how long are we going to be unemployed or for how long are we going to engage ourselves in theft and in the vices that take place in everywhere that you, we, are, we are in? So we have to, to practice the one-child policy and all will be well. With that, I rest my case. First proposer, you have three minutes to present your case. This is Muasa John from the Great Matraco School, strongly opposing the motion that states African countries should embrace the one-child policy to contain population growth. Now, my beautiful colleague here gave a good description of the motion, but there's one thing she didn't tell you, what the one-child policy is all about. So, taking a case study in China, the one-child policy was implemented in China to contain the population explosion that was taking place at that time. But this age, as some may refer to it, was an age of sadness, sorrow, desperation, and not to mention emotional, psychological, and physical torture. Why am I saying this? So in China, when this policy was introduced, it was compulsory for every family to have only one child, only one child. And if this was not meant, it was met with severe fines. And according to the New York Post, over 10,000 people were submitted to forced sterilization. Sterilization of our women, all in, the name of all in the name of containing population growth. Now, I want you to picture this. The joy that comes when a woman receives the news that she's pregnant. Not only to the mother, not only to the father, but to the community. That joy, yes, I'm going to be a mom very soon to the father. Oh yes, I'm a man, I did it. And then, all because of one policy, this child, you are told, if you had one child previously and you now have another one, this child, we cannot sustain it. Ac according to Amnesty International, over 1,400 relatives of people and couples were detained to pressure them to convert to, to sterilization and forced abortion. Where was this? Puning China. Taking an example from China, the one child policy should not be embraced in Africa because this will be, it will break our women psychological torture, emotional. You see now, in Africa, children are a source of wealth. 
blessings, continuity of generation. I mean, you see, one child policy in China, referencing back to China according to Wikipedia and uh, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. So when this one child policy was introduced, it led to disparity in sex ratio at birth. So according to this post, China currently has 32 to 36 million more males than females, which eventually led to China having to hold this policy at the end of 2015 and the beginning of 2016 and converted it to a one-child policy. Now I'm trying to imagine this situation back here in Africa in Kenya, if we implement this policy. And we have this disparity in sex ratio at birth. So the number of males being more than the number of females in our country. Taking an example in this room, if 95% of us were males and only 5% were females, I mean, who would come to this function anyway? What would it be all about? The one-child policy is a policy meant to destabilize the African social structure. And I am Moasa John and I arrest my case. Second proposal, you have three minutes for your rebuttal. I'll I'll be proposing the motion that states, African countries should embrace one child policy to contain population. My colleague on the other side asked, since when, since when did African countries start to embrace the one child policy? Since when our population exploded? That's why we are trying to contain it. China is developed, Kenya is developing. We are trying to drive Kenya into a developed country. That's why. On to my first point, it lowers the demand of resources. Take an example of Nairobi. We have rationing of water currently. There are some estates which receive water from Monday to Thursday so that others can receive from Friday to Sunday. Why? Because we are many. We are many. We need to contain our population so that we can adequately provide the economic resources without rationing. On to my second point, the number of informal settlements. We need to reduce them. If we are less, there'll be less land available. Why? The number of people, the number of children you'll be having will determine the, where you live. Take an example of the people living in Kibera. Tell me, how many children do they have? Many. That's why they end up there. But try, take an example where the parent dies. What should the child inherit? It's better if the child is one. Even if it's that Mabati house, the iron sheets, you ca she can inherit that. If there were six, and each of them marries, will they bring their families to, back to the iron sheets? No. On to my last point. Parents will be able to focus on their children's abilities and explore them. A child doesn't have to be academically, academically above average. If the child is below average, you, the child will have undivided attention from the parents, hence the parents should be able to nurture the talent of the child that she'll be able to use to generate income in the near future. I rest my case. Second opposer, you have three minutes for your rebuttal. Uwenda kaba Obama, atawale America. Uwenda kaba Lupita, Oscar Nazo Akashinda. Let's think of how our children have talent. If we reduce the number of, if we try and contain the number of children, where are we going to get actors? Where are we going to get filmmakers? I want to first ask my fellow proposers. There's a comedian known as MCA Chiki, and he is from the streets. So this means street children actually can do something in life. Okay, let me take a, a business perspective. First of all, if we reduce the number of children or we implement this one child policy, this is what is going to happen. Products and services, goods and services which are required by the young population, we lose demand. Let's think of a company which manufactures toys. It has a certain amount of profit which it gains, but if we reduce this number, unemployment, people will have to be fired from work. Let's think, these people will have to find something to do. They will have to find a means of survival. And what do they do? They indulge in crime rates. We have an increase in crime rates. We have an increase in the rate of immorality and all that. So let's think about this. Okay, if we have a little population, the government will not be able to collect enough revenue. It won't. 
Where will we get the resources to fund our social amenities? Hospitals, primary schools, and the rest. Our children, who, those who are in schools, will now start having an issue of facilities and the rest. Where will we get the resources from if we do not have, if we have another population? Lastly, um, I'd like to say this. As Lupita Nyong'o said, every, your dream is valid. So let's think about these children's dreams. There's no need to, there's no need for you to try and contain the number of people, yet religion itself, the Catholic Church has a stand against family planning, has a stand against the one-child policy. Why? Africans are considered to be religiously, to have a strong religious influence. How can you tell African people to start reducing the number of children, to start using family, family planning method and the rest? It just can't happen. And Okuntiti from the Great Machaco School. Thank you. The proposers have been asked, what if the one child who the government asks the parents to have happens to die or happens to suffer from a disease? And the opposers have been asked, what percentage exactly of Kenyans and the world at large actually subs subscribes to Catholicism as a faith? <laughs> Proposer number three, you have three minutes to answer your question. The question has been asked, what if the one child that we're asking for dies? Okay. Okay, I will answer your question in a very simple way. If you have something, you possess it, it becomes yours. And if it dies, it's no longer yours. So I think the policy will also allow you to have another one because what you possessed is no longer yours, it's left you. So you also have a chance to have another child. I also want to answer a question that came from my opponents. I commend you for your singing, yeah. Huenda Kawa Obama, something like that. Yes, but do you want to tell me that this one child that the policy is asking for cannot be that Obama you're saying? Do you want to tell me that this one child that this policy wants to implement cannot make Kenya change? Let me tell you, the population in African countries right now is exploding. That's why we want this policy to contain. What is to contain? My opponent on my side, has done it very well in the explanations. So what I think is that this policy would actually work for African countries. Why? I indeed support this motion because in Kenya we've been told we're about 53 million people and if this number, each and every family registered with a certificate of marriage is able to attain one child, they can't survive. There is no, absolutely no reason that you cannot support your child. Why? Because they just want. Okay, the African perspective. An African man, hmm, one child. Yes, Africans, we need to swap. Things are changing. In China, it's already developed, and that thing worked for them. Why can it work for us? We should ask ourselves that one question. We know change is inventable, or if you don't know, let me advise you, change is inventable. And we are looking for a fast way to reduce population growth because the lack, the, the people who live in shanties, they told me that one comedian comes from the streets. Yes, they come from the streets, but you told me it's one comedian. Tell me 20, give me a percentage, like 100%. How many street children make it out there? Yes, they toil. They look for anything to survive. That's why that one is also a comedian. So I really believe that this policy can be implemented in African countries, and it's going to help us even stabilize economically. Okay, children are a source of wealth. Okay, we cannot say that the number of women or the number of men will outdo the other. There are very many options of how one can attain just one child. The, for example, for instance, there are those kinds of people who just want, I want to be a single mom because of what they see happening out there, the violence that is taking place in Africa. I mean, you, cannot, you can't limit the power of an African man. An African perspective of mine should by now adjust how to change. If we really need to change, we really need to do what is the impossible. And let me tell you one thing, I believe that our impossibility, if we change it, can become a reality. Thank you. Adoposa, you have three minutes to answer your question. Mutina Linus from the Great Machako School, here to oppose the motion. First, let me answer my beautiful colleague, Judy. You said that we assume that all Kenyans are Catholic, but according to ChristInternational.com, which deals with religious statistics, 
more than 56% of the world population belongs to the Roman Catholic Church. So this is more than half of the total population. So if more than half of the population is going against family planning, is going against this one-child policy, then why the hell should we continue with it? My colleague just said, the third, the third proposal, just said that the police will allow you to have a second child if the first dies. But in China, only 36% of the people were allowed to have one child. And they didn't bother whether the child will die or not. All they knew is that you had to have one child, and that is it. The remaining 56% were allowed to have a second child if the first was a girl, and that was it. Then we all know necessity is the mother of invention, and a country without innovation is a country without direction. This policy will lead to lack of invention in a country. Why? People don't have the necessary necessities which would otherwise pressure them to come up with new inventions. Why would I look for a solution to a problem that I do not have? Why would I waste my time to look for an invention that I don't need? When all the other countries are moving forward, technologically advancing, yours will be lagging behind. Reason being, there are no inventions. There's nothing your country is doing. Then you'll also find, if this one child dies, and you're not allowed to have a second one, what will become of your lineage? Who will continue your legacy? You'll be traumatized, physical torture. And at other times, there occurs natural catastrophes, which can be very bad, such that it goes down with a very large population. Will we have to wait for the young population to grow up, to fill the void that has been left by this population? And while we wait, what will we be doing? Ponder over that. Mutinda Linus, out. Proposition, you have one minute for your closing statement. We have something called sex selective abortion, which can be done. Of course, you know the policy has already been implemented. And if you know you're not going to be allowed, of course, abortion is a crime. But in some instances, it is allowed to some extent. So what I think, you can still abort and have another one. Try again. Let's see if you can get a bone. And when you say that Kenya has no innovations or does nothing, I don't think so. Why then should we be called a third world class country? It means we are trying. The president addresses the nation and he says this has been implemented. This is working for us this way. If we go this way, we are able to succeed. So you cannot come up here and try to convince me by telling me that we are having no innovations in our country. That is absolutely not working for me. So I still think to contain our population growth in African countries, this policy should be implemented. Thank you. Opposition, you have one minute for your closing statement. I'm very sure that one time in your childhood, you had friends, and not one, not two, and it was the more the merrier. And one way or another, these friends have helped shape who you are today. So why do you want to take this away from our children? Why do you want to take this away from our future? You know, these children will grow up alone, and they will lack some social values, like sharing, all he knows is that everything goes to him. He doesn't have any friends to share with. He has no one else to be with. So I'd urge all of you to come forward and support us to oppose this motion. Thank you. Sengani girls, one boy. I, I love the way you started with the definition of terms. Uh, However, the submissions I felt could have been a bit more stronger, especially as, as a first speaker, your role is to get a case and then build on it. And I think you had a very good case if you started by the China example, which unfortunately came from the opposition. So some of the examples you gave, yes, were there, the one point, but could have been more stronger. So good speaker, but you were also penalized for underutilizing time. Sarah? Fair cross-examination, uh, I think the example is also on point. However, you want to improve on your passion, all right? Sometimes when you're now delivering now, get some passion on it, so that at least we can believe you. Sometimes, remember how you can convince someone that you want them to buy something from you. That's sort of passion. 
uh, is needed in debate as well. Joy, you stand out for me. You stand out for me, and I want to say that again, because you had an excellent way of answering the question. Then you're an excellent speaker, very confident, very good cross-examination of the song from the previous, uh, from the proposers, from the opposers, that was commendable. And for you as a team, I think you have a great future in debate and speaking as well. Machakos High School, John Mwasa, mastery of topic was good. You took us through history by quoting China, and that was a strong point on your part. And uh, you demonstrated that you understand what you're talking about. Then Enoch Muteti, a uh, good introduction. Uh, you captured the audience by using a relevant song, that is Sauti Sol's Nerea. It was a very positive song for this. Then the component of research was lacking. I did not hear much of the sources where you're getting your information from. Then Linus Mutinda, you had good introduction. You came in in style, but in future you start everything from the, uh, from the podium. Then you also had passion and conviction in what you're saying. However, do more research whenever you're talking. Uh, you give a point, try quoting sources from where you're getting your information from. Thank you. Despite the impeccable presentation and wonderful stage presence, someone has to win, someone has to learn. Let us appreciate Sengani girls that managed to garner 67%. Let us also give a round of applause to Machako School that garnered 71%, making them the winners of our debate today. Congratulations to both teams for a job well done. Remember, we are all winners and learners. We'd also like to appreciate our sponsors for making all this possible. Blaze by Safaricom, Brand Kenya Board, and also remember to keep the conversation going on our hashtag SDG, GDC for SDGs. Until next time, I've been your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga. Stay tuned.